Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, we have completed all the backend APIs of Article Hub project. If you are not seeing that video, just go to the description and check out the link. From this video, we are going to work on front end part. So here I have started with the backend services on port 8080. And now we have to go to the browser and we have to search Angular CLI. Once you search, you can see this option. First website, you have to open it from here. And this one, we have to install it in our system. So just copy this one. And from here, you can just search CMD from and just paste it and press enter. It will install Angular CLI in your system, which is required to creating a new project or running your command from terminals and all. So you need this one. So let me show you which version of Angular CLI I'm using currently. So here you can see I'm using Angular CLI version 16.0.2, Node version this one and uh, NPM version this one. You can also go with the same versions to avoid any issues or error. Okay and let's go back to at this place and now we have to generate now we have to generate a new project so we have to open terminals so we are going to open the integrated terminal and here you can see article hub is there so i'm going to extend this one and here i'm going to write here ng new article hub and here i'm going to write front end press enter so it will uh, ask for some options like which type of CSS routing those things so we have to select yes we need routing in our project and routing is basically to route from one to another component load one component and the component modules for those purposes it has been used and here we get options to select the which type of CSS you want to use so I'm going to with SCSS press enter now files has been creating you can see a folder has been created and you can see the different files in, inside this one has been created so we have to wait for few minutes to to generate all the files now here you can see it has been completed so if you are seeing this warning just ignore this okay and uh, now we have to go to the article hub folder you can see inside this one you can see there is a mini files exist in it so we are going with one by one so node modules so node models folder that comprises of libraries which has been installed using npm so it contains all the files if i extend this one you can see there's a lots of files so these are all the packages which has been installed we can see in it okay after that we have src folder so is in this folder basically we store all the dynamics and non-dynamics files or you can say source level file for the root level applications okay and after that dot editor dot config so as you know that uh, there is a multiple uh, like multiple types of uh, like software is there to read the codes right so there is a maybe chance that different users using different uh, uh, editors okay so to uh, the quality of the code will be uh, not consistent so we can declare a pattern of code like how it will be written and those things in this file so we are not going to use this file as we are we don't we are going to use the vs code and it's uh, mostly used when uh, you are using in an organization where multiple users is working on the same project after that we have git ignore so it is used to like uh, untrack the files that uh, does not say uh, like a store in our git like node modules Whenever we want to download it, we just need to run npm install. It will get all the dependencies installed in the system. So we does not need to push uh, this node modules in the in GitHub. Okay. So those things we can ignore. You can see there's a node module is mentioned. Means we have to ignore. We does not need to push to the Git. So all the ignoring folder or untrack our files, we can mention it over here. After that, we have angular.json. So this is for the all the CLI configuration configuration for all the project in the workspace and whatever the, in this project, we have this one. And after that, we have package lock and package uh, package.json. So in this, we have actually stored all the dependencies or all the like dependencies uh, which has been installed by NPM that is present over here you can see all the angular cli and all those things and uh, 
after that it uh, in the pro uh, package log.json we store all the like versions information of all the packages that has been installed in node uh, like node modules okay and after that read me just to like uh, for any any new user coming to your system so for the initial steps you can just read it uh, right like this those things is there okay and this one is uh, like a type script type script configuration file this one uh, ts app config and this too and this one whenever you see a spec it is for the testing purpose so we are not going to do any testing and all uh, like uh, uh, for testing uh, uh, like so just uh, so just ignore this one okay after that inside src you can see there's an app which contains all the logic all the components and pipe services everything is stored inside this one app folder and after that you can see there's an asset right so it consists of all the non dynamic files like images text pdf and other static resources we store in it after that this one is for the icon and this one is the index.html page so this one is our first page which is going to be served whenever our application is going to be a start and after that main.js and uh, main.js is the entry point for your our application it basically compiles the application with the compiler and bootstrap the application okay and it basically convert the, uh, and chunk uh, that compiles and convert the static doom into dynamics for those purposes main.js is used after that we have a style.css so it is a global css if you declare any css at this place you can access it in complete all the components and all okay now i'm going to extend this one app and now here you can see app module is there okay so in this app module we have to declare every modules which or libraries that we want to use in our application and all the dependencies we need to inject let's say if we have the, uh, created new component so we need to declare it over here if you want to use any modules which is external or provided by angular you want to import and use in here so we have to declare declare it over here like app routing module and here you can see this has been component is there you can see html css spec file we are not going to do anything with the spec file and ts model or controller you can say so this component is there and in app module.ts if you go if you go to the bootstrap over here you can see there's an app component is there it means that it's going to be a start with this component it will bootstrap from this component okay now and here you can see there's an app routing module is there so in this we are going to uh, declare our all the routings related to uh, this project like uh, from this uh, module need to be called or this component need to be called for those purposes we are going to use now we have to go to the browser now we have to search angular material so angular material component we are going to use in our application if i go to this site here and you click on get started now you scroll a little bit down here you can see ng add angular material you have to just copy paste this one and here you have to just paste it over here press enter okay uh, we have to go to inside uh, article hub folder as we are outside uh, we have created the folder you can see this folder inside this folder we need to go then we have to run that that one that's why it starts throwing it off okay so it will ask for a few things like uh, which theme you want to use or other options it will ask us and it will also take few minutes uh, to install in your system so just need to wait you can see uh, the package this one will be installed and executed yes we want this installing the packages here you can see we are getting option indigo ping this one these are the theme options so i'm going with the first one okay it was somewhere just close this one uh, press enter then we are getting this option just go with yes and yes i want to include the animation go with yes and the final it will going to generate this uh, install this package 
and uh, package installed successfully and here you can see the files which has been updated index style uh, angular.json app modules this files has been updated so just close this one as our uh, has been stored now we have to go to the app module and here we need to import few things so here we need to import forms module this one so form module uh, form module and reactive form module this both are going to be used for our forms purposes to getting uh, input uh, from user or handling all the user inputs for those purposes we need for uh, two way winding one way winding this for these things we need this uh, these two modules and uh, you can see this two has been imported from angular form from here after that we have to install one package if we go to this one and uh, we have to install this one yeah from uh, this link you can access this page and i have a scroll a little bit and from here we have to install this one okay so just copy this one open this one and we have to go to the article hub folder actually so i open integrated terminal paste it over here press enter and this package basically used for uh, like a uh, making our application responsive it will going to handle our some of the responsive uh, okay it has been installed if i go to the package.json and here you can see the flex layout has been installed and if you see angular material will be also will be there material you can see angular material is there so all the packages uh, these two packages has been installed now we have to go to the app module and again we have to import this one so just close this one for now and here we have to write flex layout module this one and here you can see this has been imported from this place okay and after that we need to create a folder here in the inside app folder create new folder shared and rename it as shared and then we have to create a new file and the file name will be material modules dot ts uh, sorry module dot ts so in the okay uh, in this folder we are going to install all the material modules so let me show you what i am talking about okay so we have to go to this place and here there is a component option is there when you click on this one you can see there's a multiple component is there you can see the button one you can see the different designs of buttons and you can see there is a card option check option if you want to use this this card buttons in our application then we need to import this module so if you want to see the module of this button let's say so you have to just go to the api and here you can see the module so we have to import all the modules which we want to use in our application so and now you have to go to the description of video i have provided a link from there you will get this file and from there you have to copy paste this one you can see there's an arrow right and here you can see the name of which file you need to copy the code so here from here we just need to copy paste this line of the code till this point if you does not see the next this one you have to copy it now we have go over here you have to just paste this and you can see we have mentioned all the materials which we are going to use or some of them we does not use but still we have imported because this is a common you can remove it and if you want to search for this one material button module you are able to find it in this one you can see we have imported this module you can see this one and we are going to use this in our project so we need to import this one in our app module.ts so here we need to mention material and here you can see we are getting this option pop up right so you have to press control space bar to getting this option just write few initial word and then just press control space bar and it will get the related options options so you can see material modules has been imported over here now here we have to use http client so http client module basically used for all the http requests so as we are going to call our apis that is a http request right so to getting uh, so sending the uh, uh, request and getting the response 
all those we are going to be handled with http request sorry http client module http client module this one and we need to import it from angular common http this one from here we need to import just save this and after that we need one more plugin that uh, like whenever http call going to happen so in that particular time we does not want user to click on any button or uh, do any other operations because that time we are waiting for response so in that period we want to show a, a loader which going to be hide all those buttons and user does not able to do in perform any operation to so we need here loader so we need to install a loader here so here we need to install npm install ngx ui dash and here we have to write loader and press enter so this package will be installed going to be installed and we have to just wait for a few seconds okay so, uh, so it should be okay it has been installed if i go to the package.json file and here if i search for npm uh, sorry ngx ui okay so what we have written npm install ngx okay it okay okay it's a uh, store uh, install outside of this one folders i think okay so just read this uh, this one my bad okay now here we have to go to the article hub for front end folder now we have to write npm install and ngx ui loader and then press enter and then it will install that package inside our article hub project and here you can see if i search now you can see it has been installed successfully in our system now we have to go to the app module app module.ts file let me close this one and below this place and here we are going to set the initial configuration for our ui loader so ngx ui loader config and here ngx ui loader config this one and you can see it has been imported it from here this one we are going to import it from here and after that curly equals after equals we have curly bracket and this will be containing of text at loader below we are going to show the text that is loading dot 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 and the text color we are going to set text color we need to set and that should okay uh, we also need to put a comma over here and uh, then we have to write here uh, like white and text position we need to pass so that i'm going to pass the center center and pb sorry pb color and this one is also going to be white and bg s color this one is also white these are the different uh, loaders and those background those colors is there f f g s color and this one is also going to be white you can change this color as per your choice and f g s uh, f g s type and uh, and here we need to pass the spinner actually so a spinner we have imported from here and this spinner actually and we have to pass which type of a spinner it is so if i go to over here and from this side and here you can see there's a different types of loader is visible currently and from this you can select any one and you can use in your application if i go back over here so spinner dot ball you can see we are getting multiple options which you have seen over here 
And if I go back this one, and here we have to write ball spin clockwise this one. And if I go over here, you can see uh, block spin clockwise. So this loader will be visible. Okay. So now get back over here again. And after that, FGS size. So I'm going to pass here 100 and PB direction. There's a line at top of the browser. There will be here. You can see at this place where your cursor you are seeing, there will be a line of loading will be visible. So for that, we have to write PB, PB direction dot left to right and right to left. This two option is there. So I'm going to say left to right and PB thickness and it is set to 5. So these are the initial configuration we need to do. And here, after that, we have to go to the as we need to import as we want to use in our project. So here we have to write ngx UI loader module, this one. And it will also going to import it from here. And after that, we have to write for root like this will be uh, uh, like accessible to complete applications each modules every place for that purpose we have mentioned the root and in this one ngx ui loader just need to pass this one name actually here just need to paste it and save this and right click on this one to format this one and you can see the space and all is has been has collect, collected okay now we have to go to the app component html and here this is the initial code you can see currently so just need to remove all the codes just remove all the codes leave the last line of this one routing outlets sorry router outlets so basically it is used to tell us the where we have to show all the routes or routes views okay and here we just need to add one line of the code that is ngx ui loader so just like uh, this one ngx ui loader and just close this one and save this file also after that uh, we have to go to the this folder src folder and right click on this open integrated terminal and here we are going to generate a environment file so in the older version of angular by default we get environment file but here you can see in the latest version 16 i think we are using in that environment file is not there so we have to generate it manually so this file is used to store the our api url configurations and all so here i'm going to just write ng generate environment and press enter it will going to generate a folder and with having two files you can see this one is development and this one is uh, for testing okay and inside this one we have to uh, paste our api so here we are going to write this will be production true as uh, api url we need to mention and here i'm going to write http and local host 80 80 our backend services is up and running so i'm going to write it over here and we are going to copy paste this one and we are also going to paste it at uh, this place for development i'm going to write here false i'm going to save it now we have to go to the uh, app folder inside src and there's a shared folder inside this one we are going to create a new file and that file name will be global dash constant dot ts press enter and inside this one we have to write export the class and global constants and here whenever we get message error message from api that uh, something went wrong or we, uh, we just need to show so we are going to create a generic message and that will be of a string type and here 
something went wrong please try again later so this message will be visible and put semicolon after that here we need to put a regex to validate uh, to validate our email address so here i'm going to write public static and uh, then email regex and that will be also a string type and in the double quotes we need to pass that regex so if i go to the this file and here you can see there is a global constant.ts and here you can see the regex you have to just copy paste this one and here you have to paste it okay it went to a different line just read this one and save this you can see now global constant has been completed part now we have to go to the serve new folder we have we have to create inside app we have to create a new folder and the folder name will be services and inside this one we need to generate few of services right click on this folder open integrated terminal you can see we have open at service folder and then we have to write ng generate service app dash user press enter it will generate a new folder oh, sorry new files inside service folder if i extend this one you can see there's a two file is there but we don't need this spec file so we can just ignore it we have to go to this one app user services this file okay and inside this one we need to write the codes so here we need to uh, like uh, uh, write here url and here from environment and we are going to import it from this one src environment from uh, production uh, environment we are going to import this one or from anywhere you're going to import it will going to work fine and then we are going to import this one and here you can see one more thing there's an injectable written over here so basically and inside this one you can see there is a provider in root so it means that it is uh, like accessible in every component or every module if you want to use in it anywhere you're going to inject this particular service you can able to use it because it is provided in his root okay and then we have to go to the constructor and here we need to import uh, we want to use uh, like a HTTP client module so HTTP client and this will be the name and then we need to import HTTP client and this one HTTP client and we are you can see we are going to import it from here and then we have to write here login and inside this one we have to pass the board uh, the data where we are going to getting it from the component and then we have to return and this going to be called the http client and which type of api we are going to want to call so we are going to call post method and inside this one we need to pass the url so url the initial url will be localhost 8080 okay till this part after that here we need to write slash app user slash login so this will be our url complete url after that uh, this url plus this one this will be our complete url right after that we have to pass the body whatever the data we are going to get it from component that need to be passed it over here so here we have to write data and then here we have to pass the headers and uh, it will look like this here we have to put a curly bracket and inside this one we have to write headers and then we have to write new http headers this one and we have to set as this is a json so we have to just write few things so content and type and application application slash json and then just save this and after that we have to just format this document and save this after this uh, we need one more service so ng generate service and 
service and that will be theme theme service press enter in the same folder we are going to generate and here you can see theme service has been generated now inside this one we need to uh, write like uh, we have to create a private method and apply theme method for, uh, function we are going to create and this method uh, we are going to call it from component to update the theme okay so in this we are going to get the name of whatever the theme we want to select and inside this one uh, this is as a private so it is not going to be called directly okay so but we will uh, indirectly we are going to call it so just uh, follow this one for now and so document so document get element by tag name this one we need to write and then body body at index zero and after that body dot class list dot remove all this uh, like primary primary t one all those things we need to remove so primary theme then ancient theme and then warn theme after that body dot class list dot add this one and then here we have to put a back tick you can see this one after that dollar and uh, curly bracket and then here we have to write theme and dash and then we are going to complete name okay and it's throwing okay so back tick will not going to close over here it will close at the end of this uh, parenthesis and put semicolon at the end okay just save this one okay it's throwing some kind of okay here we have to put the back tick actually okay so error has been removed after that here we have to call the set uh, theme and here theme whatever theme we are going to get the string a string type and uh, inside this one we are going to call the apply theme just going to pass the theme and one more thing here we want in the whenever any theme is going to be changed and then we want to store that value in our local storage. So local storage is where we're going to store our variables for temporary, like some for period of time or some, and that can be easily modified by those who are having the basic knowledge of application, okay, uh, or web uh, web browser. So we does not store sensitive information that can affect us. So we store the, uh, uh, okay, we store. These informations like theme colors or token access token, which we are going to use to sending it every time. So those things that cannot be manipulated by user easily. And uh, for those things, we are going to store in this local storage. Okay. So first, we need to uh, uh, in the single quotes we need to pass whatever the uh, name of that as it will going to store in our uh, key pair value, right? So key name first we need to pass. So here I'm going to write here theme color. And then we have to pass the theme this one and save this so theme has been set at this part of the code now it's time to return the whatever the theme we have okay so get theme and here and then we need also need, need to return the theme type so theme palette you can see this one and we have just imported this one from here you can see angular material core and if I get inside this one, you can see this three options is there. So uh, how I am able to see the uh, internal functionality of this one, I have pressed in the keyboard, I have pressed control and press on it. After that, we are able to get inside this one. Okay. So you can also do and you can check. And after that here, we have to check the few conditions. If local storage item, but get item uh, is, uh, sorry theme uh, we have to get the value of theme color so uh, here we are setting the value and here we are trying to get the value okay 
So whenever this one is going to call, we are going to get the value. It's throwing the error because we are not returning anything. I think, okay, it's a functionality which is declared not void or anything must be return a value. Okay. So we need to return some value and here triple equals and if it is null or local storage value is undefined, just change this one for undefined. In both the cases, let me decrease the size of this one. Okay. In this both the cases, we need to return some value. So here I'm going to write here primary. We have primary value we are want to return. And in else condition, we are going to get const stored theme color and this one and just remove this part and return and stored theme and it's showing the error because it is uh, not expected as uh, this one so we just need to set as as theme palette this one then the error will be get removed you can see error has been removed now then we are going to format this page and save this one now we have to generate one more ser uh, service ng generate service and this service is for snake bar to showing the messages so here we have to write snack bar and press enter and uh, here we have extended the node module so just close this you can see a snack bar service has been created now we have to open this one and this one is also blank and in the constructor we have to write we need to import uh, inject you can see and here we have to write snack bar and we need to import mat snack bar this one and we are going to import it from here and inside this one we have to write open snake snack bar and message we are whatever the message we get we are going to just get it over here display and this dot snack bar this one dot open and whatever the message we are going to get and we need to pass and single quotes and then we have to pass few configuration like this first put single single quotes and then we have to pass the configuration and here horizontal position and that will be center different positions is there you can set it by your, your choice and vertical position and i'm going to make it as top and duration duration and here i'm going to pass for 2000 means two seconds so for this period of time this message will be visible after that it's going to be hide so as per your choice you can increase or decrease the duration size duration for the showing the message okay now after that we have to go to the app folder right click on this open integrated terminal okay so you can see we are at app folder now we have to write ng generate component now we are going to generate a component so i'm going to generate a component which is name is home and here you can see it has been generated now we are going to generate one more component ng generate component login press enter and it will generate one more component and uh, we can close this other power cells and uh, this operations you can also perform it by using terminal okay it is not compulsory that you can use this power cell only and after this we have to go to the app and then we have to go to the app routing module.ts this file and then we have to do the routings so routing is basically used from a uh, route one component to uh, when we want to change load different components so that purpose and uh, we are going to use so path if path is uh, nothing like uh, whenever local host 4200 is there whenever hit then we want to load any component so we have just need to pass double quotes only and blank double quotes and then we whatever the component you want to load at that period of time so home component we, i want to load and you can see it has been imported from here 
let one more thing let me do here let me close this one open terminal let me go to the article hub project at this folder then we are going to start our server so for that we have to write ng and press space and serve and we can also just write s and press enter it will start our services so let it start our server and uh, let's get back over to the app routing module.ts file and just write the code after that this one the next path will be a uh, login and for this corresponding uh, component oh sorry login and after that comma component i want to whenever the login path is going to hit then we want to load the login component this component we need to call okay so we have declared it over here after that path and uh, if this 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 two uh, asterisk sign is called uh, wildcard. So whenever routing is wrong, let's say someone is drawn uh, if it does not go to this routing or login routing, and he try to access some routing which does not exist, then wildcard is used, and then we can also declare which component or which module we want to route. So here we just need to write home component and save this. You can see. Uh, so it will going to route to the home component let's let's test this out if i go to this one and here i'm going to write a localhost 4200 you can see home works right currently you message you are able to see if i go to the login you can see i'm going to login works this message is visible right if i write here something test and try to hit this one you can see we are again get back to the home work, home page if I change this one anything, press enter, it will again go into the home box because we are using wildcard over here and it will does not allow us to route anywhere or throw any error. So it will like to go into route us to home component. So that purpose we are using wildcard over here. Now we have to go to the home at this page and then we have to go to the home component or TS this page, uh, sorry, TS file of this home component. And then we have to call the constructor and then we have to inject here so we are going to write here public and theme service and uh, theme services which we have created earlier we are going to call and here you can see theme services has been imported and you can see the where we have imported this one you can see from here we are going to import this file okay and uh, we can now use the functions of this theme services now here we are going to create a change theme function theme function and in this we are going to just pass the color of any type and here we are going to call the theme services and we are going to set the theme and here we are going to set the color pass the color okay so this is going to be called the set theme and inside this one if I go get inside this one, you're going to call this apply theme and here you're going to change this one to set whatever the theme we are going to set and we are also going to update the local storage. Okay. So this method is going to be those, those things. After that, we have to go to the home component SCSS file. Now we have to go to the file which I have provided to earlier. You can see there's a home component SCSS file is, uh, option, uh, is there. So we have to copy all the CSS related to this one till this point. Okay. And get back to this place and paste it over here. We are not going to focus much on CSS part and these are very easy things. And um, we are mostly going to focus on Angular or Spring, uh, sorry, Node.js part. Okay. So now in, now we have to go to the uh, home component dot HTML and we are going to remove this one. Now here we have to write mat toolbar toolbar this is the component which is has been provided by the angular material so if i check here toolbar is there tool bar you can see this one material toolbar so this one we are going to use as a header you can see this one this is a different example so it's also there are different types and options you can see and this is the api we need to import for using this module in our project so we have already declared so we can use it so close this one and after that here we have to write class mat 
vision dot JDate and here we have to pass the color so I'm going to write a color and in this we have to pass the theme services this one so this variable we need to pass and here we have to write theme services dot get theme or color you can say save this one and if I go to do this place at article have printed you can see we are getting the color you can see the primary color is visible at the header you can see the matte toolbar color it means that it's working fine still this point and after that we have to write article hub and then we have to span and class spacer this one we are going to use as these are already declared so i'm not going to put much effort on it you can see this one is a special area so i'm going to just ignore this one and then we are going to write a button so this button going to be open the options to select the color so button mat icon icon button and mat menu trigger trigger for menu and close this one and inside this one we have to write mat icon mat icon palette this one save this and outside of this one we are outside of button we have to write mat menu hash okay it's compiling uh, uh, again and again because uh, i have a uh, uh, pressing control s to save these files that's why it's compiling again 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 and again so you can just ignore that part okay so menu equals so here we have to pass mat menu just close this one and you can see error has been removed if i go over here you can see we are getting these options article hub is there in the left side right side you can see the palette you can see the a pop-up has been opened but it is blank okay just go over here now here we have to put button and here we have to write mat fab button fab button so different types of button is already there you can see if i go to the button you have to just go with this one mat uh, fab button you can see this one mini fab button this one so these are the buttons we are using mat fab and the color we need to pass that is a uh, primary primary and the class button to put the margin between one or uh, other button so after that we have to click and then we have to call a uh, whenever anyone click on this button in that case we need to pass call this method so we have to copy paste here the name and then inside this one in the single quotes we have to pass the prime view. so this color is going to be passed whenever this method is going to be called and close the button and inside this one we have to write mat icon and then we have to close this one and here we have to write done and this icon is should be only visible whenever this color should be selected so we need to put a condition over here so here i'm going to write a star ng if directive we are going to use so this directive basically used to hide or show the element dynamically in our dom okay so here i'm going to write here a theme services this one we are going to call and dot kit theme this one and uh, triple code uh, triple equals uh, and then we have to check that it should primary or not okay okay i think it has been set as a auto save i think so that's why it's uh, saving it again and again i think okay so let me show you here if i go to at this place you can see i am getting this option because it is done because primary is selected currently that's the reason it's showing like this okay i'm getting back to this one I'm going to copy this uh, buttons three two times over here 
paste one more time I'm going to okay so this in the file auto save was enabled so just remove this one so whenever we save we are going to compile it it was unnecessary showing the errors and those things are very confusing so just okay so now here now here we need to change to a double c e n t s n this one and just copy this one and change here also and here also change this one and save this and here we have to change to the warn and copy this one change this place and this place also and save this now if i go to the over here and you can see we have these three options okay so there is some uh, css you can see when you click on it you can see the css and view has been changed of this uh, matte toolbar you can see changing it color it means that theme is working fine as expected now we have to go to the vs code again now here outside menu button uh, menu mat menu here we have to write a button write a code for button that will be mat icon button and this will be going to route our to the login page so here we have to double quotes as this is and uh, square brackets and single quotes then slash login and then we have to write here mat icon and here we are going to write login save this and after that below outside of mat toolbar we have to create one more mat toolbar and the color uh, will be the this part will be same so color we have to theme services get this one so just copy paste this one and uh, after that we are going to class and footer and inside this one whatever the message you want to show div class toolbar content and here all rights reserved at the rate at the rate btech days and then we are going to close the dev save this one now if i go over here you can see we are able to see the message uh, article hub is there you can see but two buttons is there we are able to change the color and if i click on this button we should able to log route to the login url you can see over here if i go back by the browser back button you can see we are able to back to this page i'm going to the login page and now we have to write the codes for our login page so now we have to go to the login component inside this one login component dot ts we need to uh, first create the login form and it should be any type and form group we need to pass and we are going to import all the things like from uh, we have declared two modules right from there we are importing these things okay and after that response message any just format this one if you want and just scroll down and here we need constructor and we want to use and we want to inject so private form builder to build our form so form builder this one we need to import it will also going to import it from angular forms and after that private router and router this one so angular router we need to import it from angular router so from ts file if you want to route from one to another page you can also use this one and after that we have we need private app user service which we have created earlier and that we have created a uh, like um, I think uh, login uh, method 
we are going to use it over here after that we need to import private and then we need ngx service and this will be for the loader so ngx ui loader loader service this need to be import ngx ui loader service you can see here scroll a little bit down and then we need to import our snack bar services service so snack bar service this need to be import and at last we need to uh, import and for this theme service is always use public okay and theme service and theme service we need to import it from this place and save this okay and scroll a little bit down and and here before that we just need to hear implements and here we have to write on in it we just going to import it from ng on it and just ignore the error we are going to just need to declare here method and then it will get removed so ng on it we need to declare you can see error has been removed and inside this one we need to write like this dot login form and equals to this dot uh, form builder and group and here inside the curly bracket after parenthesis we have a curly bracket and here we have to write email so this was the first this will be the first field and initial value we are going to pass the value false and after that the square brackets we need to put the validations which we want so validators from angular forms we need to import and we want is required so if i scroll this one you can see there's a form you can see there's a validator option is there so we are going to import it from there after that validators dot pattern and in the brackets we are want to call the global constant which we have created in our shared folder this one global constant you can see and here you can see the global constant we have imported from here and inside this one we have a email regex we just need to pass it over here for the validations purpose and then we need to pass the password as a next value which we want to get it from user and after that uh, we can also write validators returns dot required and save this and after that here we need to write the code to handle our form or submit so handle submit and uh, then first thing what we want to do is whenever button is going to be clicked then we need to show the loader let me scroll a little bit and ngx service and then we have to start the loader this way it's going to be a start and from where form data we are going to collect the data so we have created the variable or we can also use let and so here this login form dot value so we are getting the value uh, as this is a form by dot value we can access all the values uh, of that particular form and here where data we are going to create the body in the email uh, like key value pairs so here i'm going to write a form data dot email and password and form data dot password and uh, after that here we need to call the api right so this dot uh, app user app user services which we have created inside this one we have a login method which that we need to call and as it is expecting body so i'm going to pass a body which is name is data and we are going to subscribe this one and uh, parenthesis and inside one more parenthesis and response if any we get and after that equal this one and then we are going to create the bracket and then we have to ngx services 
so whenever we get the response successfully re response then we are going to stop our loading part so i'm going to write here loading stop and local storage dot set item and we are expecting a token from ui okay so we are going to store that in our local storage that we are going to this token as we are going to use for all the http requests right okay and this dot router dot navigate and we need to navigate to some page okay so i am going to write a url a path that does not exist till this point but we will going to create in future so here i'm going to write here the article hub slash dashboard put semicolon at the end and after this curly bracket and between parentheses we have to put a comma and then we have to write here error if any error occur in that case we need to execute this part and console.log whatever the error occur in the console we want to print just write error and this dot ngx services dot in this case also we want to stop the uh, loader and if error dot error question mark dot message any message we are getting and this dot response message is equals to and we just need to copy this one whatever the message we get and in else condition in else condition we are just going to set the response message is equals to global constant dot generic error message we are going to show so it will show something went wrong please try again some later so those message we have declared in the global constant over here that message is will be visible if error error dot message does not exist and just save this and and here one more thing on back button we need to navigate to some other page so so router dot navigate and we need to navigate to our home page so just write like this put just a bracket uh, sorry uh, slash and save this and after this we need to go to the scss and it is blank now we have to go to the this file and you can see we have this one so just copy paste this part and get back to over here just paste it and save this okay now we have to design our login form so here i'm going to just delete this one i'm going to write a body and inside this one div class and login container this one and put a bracket close this one after the div class logo close this one sorry close this one and inside this one mat icon and here we have to put a lock lock button if i save this one if i go over here so you will see a login form like this till now now let's get back over here now here we need to write here div dev style some uh, inline css we are also going to use you can put it on uh, uh, like you can also use it you can also use a css file for this so margin bottom 5px and here we have to just write article hub like this and after that we have to create a form so form close the bracket and then we have to write a form group which we have created right so that name was user form so here we uh, sorry login form login form this one and inside this one we need to create a div and here we are going to use flex so fx flex 
fx layout and it should be column close this one and here we have to declare create a mat form field so and and inside this one we need to pass the attributes related to this one mat form field so as uh, input uh, we need to display like for email and for the password we need to display so here we have to declare this one so you can go more think about this one if i go to the angular you can see if i go to the input there's a different types of input is there if i extend this one you can see there's a mat form field is there inside this one is a label to visual the message if i click on each one, you can see there's a label leave a comment so this is the mat icon and after that this things is there so we will explain you each and everything okay so after that mat form field there's an appearance so different type of appearance is there outline is there and uh, and here you can see we have different outlines if i go to this options you can see uh let me scroll a little bit down i think we have no not this but still i will show you those options uh first slide here appearance and outline and here fx flex we need to write here and we also need to set the color for this one also same as uh, the uh, we did in our same as we did in our mat toolbar okay okay it should be outside uh, my bad outline it should be close it over here that's why it was throwing some error so theme services this one and get theme this need to be called and inside this one we have a one more thing that is mat label and it should be email you can see this one email it will be visible and inside this one input and mat input and form controller name so this will be going to be control the form with this name so as we have created email and password so first we need to pass the email so control name and here we have to pass the email and it is a required so i'm going to just mark as a required if i save this one if i go at this place and let's open the article okay if i refresh this one okay it's going outside of this form okay so if we did something uh, wrong here okay so div login container does not close close at this place so just need to uh, remove it from here close it at this place now save this and let's get back over here now it's looking good you can see if i clicking on it it's it's going to be work okay and one more thing here we have right 5 pc which is not correct so here we have to just change to 5 px and if i go over here now it's looking perfect and you can see uh, whenever we click on inside this one field you can see mat uh, label is visible at little bit upper so these are the animations has been already coded by the angular material team and we are directly using those component in our application and after that as uh, there might be chance of uh, validations and those things so we also need to show the errors so for that purpose here we have to write mat error error star ng if and login form dot controls dot email dot touched is uh, if that form is touched and login form dot controls dot email dot invalid dot invalid in the both the cases it's going to show the error okay let me decrease the size of this one for now and inside this one and here we have a span and star ng if login form uh, login 
form dot controls dot email dot error dot require if this error is equals so this field is required this message we are going to display and in and one more is there so star ng if login form dot controls dot email dot emails dot error in pattern if there is an error so in the login dot component we have a declared a pattern right so we have so here we have declared email regex right Okay, one more thing is this Nagwa services is uh, shown as it is not in use. It should be in use. Okay, so here I forget one more line here. After else condition, we need to display the message, right? So Nagwa services dot open Nagwa, and in this whatever the response message is there, we just need to pass there to just show it. Okay, and just close this one again. Get back to a pattern page. And here we just need to write pattern, and then we have to write this field is uh, invalid. So this error we are going to show. If I go to the this page again, and I'm going to leave it. You can see this field is required. The focus whenever lost from this input field, then it's showing the error. If I write a test, so you can see error message has been changed. It's showing. That uh, this field is invalid. If I write at the email dot com, you can see error has been removed. Okay, so let's get back at this place. Uh, now we have to write the code for one more field which we needed. So I'm going to just copy paste this one. I'm going to paste it over here, and I'm going to change the values. So I'm going to change a password as a mat uh, label and for the form control we also need to change for the password and we also need to change the error so here i'm going to change this one this one and this one and as we does not have any validations uh, sorry uh, pattern for this password so we can remove this part also and uh, now if i go over here you can see password and this field is visible okay and after that here we need a button to submit this form so here i am going to write a button and it should be met reached button and it should be disabled so whenever the form is invalid or it is uh, a pattern does not match or values did not filled uh, by user so in that case we need to disable our login button so for that we have to write here uh, not equal sorry not equal and here we have to write login form dot valid and login form is dirty so our form should be well and not valid or our form is not touched or dirty sorry in that case we need to do and after that we also need to pass the color so it should be also the color need to be also be changed of this button okay so we have to just copy paste this one code and after that we also need to write the code like click click event we need to call and here we need to call uh, we have created a method that is handle submit so handle submit we need to call whenever someone's click on login and you can see this one so here you can see you have to put the parenthesis to call that method so this is a actually an event so what is an event if you uh, try to understand so event is like a sender which is a uh, message which has been sent to its uh, subscriber to notify whatever the changes happen so in that case we are just going to call that uh, that method and uh, as a subscriber that going to be executed that particular codes okay and inside this login if you want to show login just let me format this one and let me show in the single line you can see matrice disable and this is the 
and after that color and click handle submit okay and after that form after this form close then we need to write the code for the back button so i'm going to do class and whom link i'm going to write like this close this one and here we have to write a span and here we have to write click and on back and put uh, close this one and put a space little bit and put one more span and here the style color we are going to set to blue blue and cursor pointer and here back and then we are going to close this one save this and our form has been created now here we have to write first wrong email address and password so i'm going to write a email admin i'm going to going to inspect and here's the different tabs is there this is a console tab and this is a network tab from here you can see all those apis which we are going to call it from here and uh, if i go to the application and if i go to the local storage and here you can see localhost uh, 420 if i click on it at this place you can see we have okay remove these things for now just refresh this one as this has been stored the local storage from my other application project i'm going to change this one and here you can see theme colors font set to right currently now if i write here test at the rate email.com and here you can see the local storage values which has been stored at this place and here i'm going to write the admin now again get back to the network tab as these are the files has been called let me close this one also and from here you can clear all these uh, network tabs which has uh, uh, well things uh, apis has been called clean this one and i'm going to click on login you can see incorrect email or password and if i click on this one from here you can see the header you can see the requested header you can see the payload whatever the values we have set or you can see the body of the value of the api we have passing you can see the email address which we have written over here is we are passing at this place and the password you can see inside it, this one and if i click on preview you can see whatever the message or response we are getting it from our server and you can see from here you can see both okay and after that let's uh, use some credentials uh, which status is false so in that case it need to be return us the error that wait for admin approval so i'm going to try that one first I'm going to click on you can see we are getting the error and we are also getting the error message wait for admin approval okay so it means that everything is working fine so now we are going to try with the correct email ad, uh, correct email address which exists in our database and as of now we does not have routing which we have declared over here so this routing does not exist and so in this case what will what need to be happened so a token need to be get uh, from the server and that need to be stored in the local storage and the url is need to be changed from login to that url and it should be route to the home page let's try it out i'm clicked on it you can see first thing is we have route to the this page home page and we have urls has been changed okay then we are going to check that login and you can see we get the token right right in the response you can get the token now i'm going to application and i'm going to check the local storage you can see in the local storage uh, the token has been stored it means that our login api is correctly connected with our front end part so this is all about login part i hope you guys like this videos in next video we will work on other parts of this projects so stay tuned with us please hit like and subscribe my channel thank you